us up to God and we accept Jesus' living water, there are amazing things that can happen. And you are able to do things that other people without the living water cannot do. Right? So, I mean... Pretty cool. Yeah. I was amazed, I have to admit. I was pretty excited. I was really excited. <laughs> so, we believe in God and we receive... We receive God's spirit, and God's spirit lives in us and provides us with love that flows from us to others. God's spirit flows from our hearts like a river of living water, and we all benefit from that. Let's pray. Loving God, just as we have poured this water into the empty can, please fill all of us with your loving spirit. Help us to become fountains of your living water and to show your love and kindness to others in the midst of a thirsting world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And can I have a hand for my wonderful assistant, Sydney Philibon. Awesome. All right. Let's stick this in here. And we'll be on our way. Can you hold that for me, please? Mm -hmm. Let me move this out of our way. I invite you to turn to the last page of our bulletin to see the members who are in need of prayer. And I'll direct your attention to Don Wesley. Last Sunday, he joyfully told everyone that he was going to be in Florida for much longer and uh, he was going to enjoy warm weather, and uh, we weren't. And unfortunately, um, he got the results back of a skin biopsy and has melanoma. So he has returned. I'm glad he's returned, but I am very sorry that... uh, He has um, this ahead of him, so we want to give him our prayers for healing and for discernment and guidance for the doctors who will be planning his um, treatment. Let us pray. Oh, let us turn to God in prayer. Lord God, uh, many churches celebrate uh, the baptism of Christ Sunday as the second Sunday in January. And so we remember and are so appreciative that Jesus came and they took on all of the human rituals and festivals and ways of of, uh, being faithful human, even baptism. And in that baptism, he was anointed by your spirit. Lord God, so we think about waters today. Waters of baptism that cleanse us and claim us. Lord God, we are grateful for your cleansing power and for claiming us as your children. And we remember water as play and as fun. We're grateful for the delight that we experience with one another and with all of creation. 
Lord God, we are grateful for water that gives us life. So today, we celebrate the rivers of life, the waters of baptism, the waters of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, that Jesus pours out upon all of those who believe in him. And Lord God, we pray for the waters of healing to be upon those whom we love. We pray for the waters of healing upon Don and upon Doris, upon Cheryl, upon Jean and Bill, Charlie and Maureen, on Mary, and continue to heal Marlene and Stephanie. Lord God, we are grateful for your healing that washes over us. And we pray for your healing upon those um, we lift before you today. And Lord God, we are grateful for the waters of life. Grateful for the salvation we have in Jesus Christ. Grateful for the new life that we have experienced. We pray, Lord, pour upon us and upon Massillon your waters of life. Lord God, in this time, we also pray so grateful for your waters of healing, your waters of strength, your waters of perseverance. We see in Jesus, God and human, who needed water and also spread the waters of salvation across the earth. Lord God, we're grateful that he practiced prayer and he taught his disciples to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say on that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel.
becoming one of my favorites. <laughs> Our scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 7. On the last day of the Festival of Booths, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who's thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, this is really the prophet. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some asked, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. And then a temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked him, asked them, why did you not arrest him? And the police answered, Never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, Surely you have not been deceived too, have you? Has any one of the authorities or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, they are accursed. And Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus before, and who was one of them, asked, Our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? And they replied, Surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. Water. It is a necessity of life something that we still need to pay attention to even with our modern conveniences. In the winter, we're concerned with temperature and freezing pipes. In the summer, we seek ice cold water to quench our parched throats. Survivalists, tell us that humans can only last for three or four days without water. Our gospel lesson for today is the fourth time 
that water figures prominently in only seven chapters of the Gospel of John. Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist, his walking on the water on the Sea of Galilee, his offer of living water to the woman at the, at the well in Samaria, and now this message of more explanation of living water during the Festival of Booths. Water is so critical to human life. And Jesus, Jesus uses it to describe his gift of new life and salvation. There's something else that Jesus found just as critical and life-giving as water. Participation in the religious life of his community. Jesus prayed by himself and with his disciples. He taught in local synagogues and in the courtyard of the temple. Jesus and his disciples follow the covenant and the law. They observe scriptural restrictions and commands. The Gospel of John reports that Jesus went to Jerusalem to worship at the temple for all three of the th required festivals, for Passover, for Pentecost, and for the Festival of Booze. Jesus observed these holy days at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus not only observed these festivals, commemorating God's redemptive acts, he also reinterpreted the festivals, showing how they included and are transformed by the salvation he brings. You may have heard of the spring festival, Passover, that Jesus understood himself to be the Paschal Lamb, allowing God's wrath, which was just in response to human sin, to pass over those who believed and trusted in Jesus. You may have heard of the early festival of Pentecost. That was a Jewish festival too, which occurred 50 days after Passover. It, it was initially a thanksgiving for the first fruits of the wheat, wheat harvest, but later associated with the giving of the law by Moses. Have you heard of the festival of booths? Jesus and his disciples had been in Jerusalem all week for the festival of booths or tabernacles. The festival occurred in the fall and it commemorates God's provision for God's people. A particular time of God's provision during the wilderness after their escape from Egypt. Every family erects a booth or tabernacle, remembering how their ancestors were led, provided for, and sheltered in tents. The festival remembers how God provided for God's people, and it also looked forward to the future messianic age when all nations will worship God in Jerusalem. Now, over the hundreds of years of celebrations, the fest of celebrating the festivals, other observances were added. A lot like our Christmas, which uh, now includes Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve worship, trees, greenery, lights, all the things the youth spoke about in their Christmas play the seven fishes dinner, a lot of extra stuff. Now, what's important to today's scripture is the ritual of the last day of the festival. Hashna Rabbah, supplication for salvation or great salvation. The priest would go from the temple to a nearby pool of water. They would fill a, a golden vessel with water from the pool, and they would proceed to the temple while shofars, those are giant 
ram's horns, I think, shofars were blown, sounding more like trumpets than like flutes. And then they would pour out the water flowing over the altar in the temple. Everyone would shout and dance and sing and celebrate, anticipating God's salvation that will be poured out upon the people. They were enacting God's promise through the prophet Isaiah that was read this morning. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and God has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Perhaps you remember that Joseph named Jesus according to the instruction of the angel Gabriel. His name is Yeshua. He saves. So here's the scene in the Gospel of John. The priests have poured out the waters of salvation from, a, from the pool onto the altar. All the way through the city, as they brought the water, horns were blowing, people, men danced and celebrated in anticipation of the messianic age. Anticipating that God would pour out God's salvation upon Jerusalem, upon God's people, upon all the people of the nations who trusted in God. On that last day, in the midst of this celebration, Jesus cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let one who believes in me drink, as the scripture says, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. The scripture from Isaiah says, with joy you will draw out water from the wells of salvation. Jesus is named salvation. He reinterprets this scripture and this ritual of salvation. Draw waters of salvation. Draw from me. I save, says Jesus. I am God's salvation. The messianic age has begun. God sends the Holy Spirit through my arrival to those who trust in me, delivering river of living water. All of that that I explained to you took two, two verses in Scripture to tell us. The rest of our Scripture was the response. We learn from this chapter that describes the Festival of Booths Week that Jesus' teaching provokes passionate responses. Some believe and say, this is the Messiah. Others are appalled and turn away. Who does he think he is? God. Others reason that Jesus couldn't possibly be the Messiah because he's from Galilee, not Bethlehem. And those in authority want him arrested. Encountering Jesus still demands a decision. Will we receive from the wells of Yeshua the waters of salvation, the power and the transformation of the Holy Spirit. We don't get to pick and choose. I think we may prefer something like a fast food window. I'll take two servings of power. Hold the conviction of the Spirit, please. I'll leave the fruit of the Spirit that will spoil the way I live my life. Ah, the generosity, the self-control, the patience, the goodness, no thank you. But I'll take double portion of joy, please. 
saying yes to Jesus means receiving new life and allowing the waters of the Spirit to change our lives every day for the rest of our life. Jesus invites everyone who is thirsty, everyone who has no money, come, enjoy my salvation. And we will sing in response, shall we gather at the river? It's been fun to have so many uh, uh, living water and river uh, music. So shall we gather at the river? We usually think of it as the rivers of baptism, but it's the rivers of living water. Are you familiar with this one? Excellent. Let's sing. In response to the call of God, the church works in multitude of ways. And we have some announcements about the work of the church. 
This one's a fun one. The work of the church is a continuation of the fellowship that we have with God and Christ here in our sanctuary. So to continue that fellowship, we will be celebrating birthdays in Bickle Hall after church today. It's the, all the January birthdays we will be celebrating. So if your birthday's in January, please come on down. If you want to celebrate January birthdays, come on down. should be fun. The Community Warming Center on January 16th. So that would be 18th or 19th is Thursday for us. We'll be opened if um, the temperature goes below 20, is 20 degrees or below. So we've been working and trying to assemble some volunteers. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are mornings. We have volunteers. We still need some volunteers for the afternoon. So the afternoon shift is from 12.30 to 4.30. You don't have to worry about uh, feeding anyone. Uh, so perhaps if you're not, uh, uh, um, not interested in serving a, a lunch, uh, the afternoon would be a good time for you to uh, volunteer. So we're still looking for volunteers for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoons. The, whoop, back up. I have one more thing. Look at the bottom. It says volunteer meeting is this Thursday, January 12th at 7.30. So we'll meet after the deacons meeting, and we're going to meet in Bickle Hall. That way we'll uh, go over kind of the simple procedures. It's very simple. Um, and uh, uh, any questions that the volunteers might have. And that's going to be this Thursday at 7.30. Let's take a look at the next one. The annual congregational meeting is approaching. It's going to be January 22nd after worship. So make a note on your calendars or in your phone. All right, that's all the announcements that we have. Oh, I have one more. Back in November, we planned for um, spiritual maturity and the senior mind to meet on January 15th. That will be postponed to the second Sunday in February. So we'll meet the second Sunday in February. That'll be in our, um, our newsletter. Are there other announcements? together and then we're going to watch a movie to get our uh, Monday night meetings restarted so that'll be a week from Monday at six o'clock encourage all the men to come out and uh, join our group so the eighth commandment simply says do not steal but that statement is so much more than a prohibition it is an invitation to be truthful in our dealings with others to be faithful stewards of our resources, and to practice justice in all that we do. As a sign of our commitment to God and God's reign on earth, let us receive our tithes and offerings.
generous God, you create and redeem us not to be idle, but to do those things that are good and useful in your name. Accept these gifts given in love for you. As a hearty tree bears fruit in abundance, we pray that this offering would bring its own harvest so that the world might be fed, clothed, and cared for, even as you feed, clothe, and care for us. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>